Starting off this countdown, we have the plot to kill. This photo was taken of Thomas Bart Whittaker on the left and his younger brother Kevin on the right, just hours before Thomas planned to have his family killed. So apparently the two brothers were just goofing off and their mother wanted to take a photo of them. Then later, they went out for dinner as like a little celebration for Thomas completing his exams, which was a lie. Anyways, while they were at the restaurant, Thomas had his friend enter his home and retrieve a gun and stage a burglary. He then waited at the front door for Thomas's family to return home. Once they did, he shot Thomas's mom and brother. His dad managed to survive. The photo shows Thomas's happy younger brother, but little did he know that his older brother literally had a plot to kill him. It's so disturbing. What do you guys think? Number nine, the demonic boy photograph. It doesn't matter where or when, but odds are you've probably seen this photo at some point. All those late nights when you're scrolling through Reddit, you've probably seen this at some point. I know I have, and every time I see it, I'm kind of like, mm, it looks pretty real. It's pretty haunting. You know when you see a photo, sometimes you get bad vibes, like it registers in your brain as something scary and real. It's like you want to find something that looks fake about the photo, but it's tough. This photo was taken inside the Amityville house in 1976. It appears to be a young boy or ghost, spirit, demon, whatever, with glowing white eyes. It was taken with automatic cameras equipped with infrared. And it makes it even creepier that the boy looks like he's peeking around the corner. Like he knew something was coming almost, he didn't want to get caught. That's the creepiest part here. A photographer named Gene Campbell took it, and Gene was working with paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren at the time. Yeah, the famous duo now rocking the big screen Conjuring universe. This was a real thing. They were on this case in real life. This photo was revealed three years after it was taken, and it was revealed on the Merv Griffin show. Imagine seeing this on a show, like Jimmy Kimmel whips this out. It's like, hey, we're gonna play Plinko. Check out this demon. Many believe this is the ghost of John DeFeo, one of the boys who lived there prior during the 1974 event. Now we're still trying to cover this one, but what do you guys think? Is this an elaborate hoax? Is this a young boy? Or is this one of the many demons that was said to haunt the house? Sound off down below. Number eight, the SS Watertown. This picture here perhaps is one of the creepiest on this list. I'm not sure what to think of this one. It comes from 1924 and it shows what appears to be two older men or two older figures almost. I don't know, it's water, it's hard to tell. Some believe it's James Courtney and Michael Meehan in the water. Now the two had previously died and were buried at sea, hence that's why their first thought was them as to who it was. Other crew members saw these strange faces in the water as well. So when they turned back to get another look, five out of the six photos showed nothing. This was the only photo that showed what they saw. Are these the two lost crewmen or is the vessel haunted by sinister forces? Number seven, backseat driver. This photo is from 1959. Okay, it was taken by a lady named Mabel Chinnery. And the photo, at first glance, is just a classic 60s shot of a man in a car. That man was Mabel's husband. Now, the man in the back seat, however, that back left seat, we have no idea who that was. Her husband, apparently, was the only guy in the car at the time. And also, that's a pretty tough angle. If you wanted to recreate this photo with your friends after work, like, try this. This is a really hard shot, even with phones now. It would be hard back in the day. It's like he's appearing to us through the seat, almost, with that angle. So either this is a lie, which happens often. People can lie and a man was sitting in the back left seat or like Mabel thinks maybe this is her dead mother-in-law. Now if she had said father-in-law I think maybe it was his spirit but this for sure looks like an older gentleman with a collar or something. Kind of looks like uh, dare I say it the devil. I don't know I read a lot of comic books. Number six Coventry Society Demon. You may be thinking some of these may not be demons Taylor maybe they're just nice spirits who stuck around after they passed. Yeah while it's nice to believe that photos like this convinced me otherwise. This is from the Coventry Tree Freeman Society and it shows everybody at this event dressed to the nines. But when you look at the top left corner over here, you see a hooded figure. Somebody that clearly doesn't belong with the vibe in this room at this event. Nobody else was seen also at any point at that night wearing a hood like this. So of course many believe it was a dark part of the afterlife photobombing this event. Honestly, I totally believe that. This is a weird one. The hood, it's... I, maybe I've been watching Harry Potter lately. I don't know. Maybe it's a Dementor. We actually don't know. Number five. The ghost pilot. Oh, this one gives me the creeps. I'm hoping it's just a friendly ghost. I included it because it's kind of nice, but you never really know, honestly. This one, I did some research. It's creepy. Any sort of spirit, I don't welcome. Yeah, I don't gamble on the afterlife. I'm actually all set. The ghost pilot is a photograph that shows a spirit from 1987. A woman named Mrs. Sayer was visiting an airfield in England, so of course, she did the classic tourist thing and got a photo in the cockpit. We all do it at some point, but do you ever think of who may have died in that exact spot before? After the age of 10 years 
old, I was like, you know what? I understand ghosts. I'm not gonna sit in that tank. I'm good, thanks. People swear the Titanic was a cursed ship and that spirits were responsible for the ship's bad luck. Now, next time you wanna sit in the pilot's seat, look around for spirits, because this image was developed and it appears that somebody or something was in the helicopter with Miss Sayer the whole time. Number four, the Paris Demon. Originally, the tunnels under Paris were built for stone mines, but near the end of the 18th century, it turned into something haunting. Cemeteries were starting to fill up, and I mean that in a literal sense, and humans didn't figure out how to be clean, so bodies would just be laying on the sides of the roads. They started to pile up over time, so the solution was to use these catacombs. They were no longer needed for those mines anymore, so might as well use them as a mass graveyard. And now we have the scariest basement in the world. We have walls of skulls that on one hand, it's cool as hell, it's natural history, it's gothic, yet beautiful, but when Google Maps tried to give a user an up-close look, it seemed to have caught a shadowy demon figure. With more than six million souls laying down there, it doesn't shock me to hear about something like this at all. There's a video of the street view and in it you can see this figure. Check it out yourself. Number three, demons are us. For this next one, we'll be going down the Lego aisle. Yeah, how fun. A haunted Toys R Us. Can you imagine all those toys starting up at night by themselves? Boom. Bay Area's haunted Toys R Us is no longer a thing. Thankfully, as of 2018, that location closed down, but its tales, they live on forever. The Sunnyvale Toys R Us demonic presence appeared in the background of this photo. But of course, like others on this list, the people present at the time of the photo swear that nobody else was there. It's like everyone has bad memory, everyone has good memory, I can't really tell right now. It's like, mm, could this be a spirit or a demon caught on tape that just happens to be at a Toys R Us? I vote yes. Employees talked about creepy things happening there at night all the time, and the Sunnyvale store is indeed haunted by more than one ghost. That's what people say. The store stood where the Murphy farm once stood, so many think the spirit is the ghost of Johnny Johnson. I don't know, the fact that Ouija boards are a toy, a toy that is commonly used to, I don't know, communicate with spirits, maybe closing these doors was the best call. I don't think we welcomed in any good spirits. I don't think any spirits are clocking in for work, you know what I mean? And now it's closed, so I'm like, it didn't work. Whatever we tried, didn't work. Number two, ghost boots. These boots are made for haunting, and that's just what they'll do. Yeah, I put a pair of boots on this list. That's where we're at now. This photo of a young girl may look like a classic family trip, but upon closer inspection, it seems like somebody or something is standing behind her. Now, of course, her father said that nobody was behind her at the time that it was taken, and I agree, that, and like, honestly, and I believe him. Honestly, that would be pretty weird if he was like, hey, can you stand right here? Yeah, are you behind my daughter? Don't move, but you stand right here in this open field. Thanks. Kaching. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. It's weird. This shot was taken at Zushi Zenigawa, Japan, and you can see boots and what looks like clothing sticking out from behind the child's elbow. The kid's father said, I took a few photos, and when I was looking through them at night, I noticed the boots behind her. I took several photos in the same spot, but only one of them had boots. You always see that in movies, right? At night, they're going through, and they see, like, it's 2 a.m. It's never at a Walmart while it's being developed. They don't find these photos in a bright, busy area. It's always in a dark kitchen. Ugh, it's creepy. So he freaked out, and then put it on Reddit, and then now. We're here, full circle. And finally, coming in at number one, cave drawings. I know these aren't photos, but come on, there's nothing more eerie than humanity's origin, right? Let's do it, let's go back, let's turn the clocks back. And for archeologists from around the world, this cave system in France doubles as the world's oldest art gallery. These Paleolithic paintings are haunting to look at. They were created from humans about 20,000 years ago, and it's now considered a heritage site. There's many of these caves around the world. So if you're thinking about sneaking down there in the Lascaux Caves and taking a look yourself, well, you better think again. The cave was opened originally in 1948, but due to carbon dioxide levels from visitors, it was closed in 1963. Learning about our history is challenging, and when it's slowly fading away, that surely doesn't help. Just gotta hold your breath while you read? This is crazy. I'm currently reading a book called Supernatural by Graham Hancock, and in it, he tries to dig through history to find the origins of spirituality, and markings in caves like these ones from ages ago definitely help. They resemble these demon-looking creatures almost, and this is long before religion. These drawings were supposedly from hallucinations, but many believe it's one of the first accounts of a demon interacting with a human. It's just drawn on a cave wall. Peck Merle is a cave in France that also has these strange drawings, and some say they resemble aliens, others, of course, voting demons. One of the gods of rock and roll, a man who paved the way for the carefree and breakout behavior of the 70s. His music would define a generation, and the things he could do with a guitar would shake the heavens themselves, and this was the last picture taken of him. This guy was so legendary that there were several rumors created about this rock icon, most of them related to his music career and his habitual partying. People said he used to put acid in his headband when he went out to play. Eventually he would start to sweat and the LSD would seep into 
his skin, and he would be on a wild ride of psychedelics while playing in front of thousands of people. I can't even imagine what that experience would have been like. There's also talk that he wrote the whole song Purple Haze about an LSD trip, but the official statement is that it was a dream. But unfortunately, his partying lifestyle eventually caught up with him. Jimi Hendrix was found dead on the floor of a hotel room after he fixated on his own vomit. This was caused by a cocktail of drugs and alcohol that he had taken, and then he would join the infamous 27 Club. Coming in at number 9, we have John F. Kennedy. Victor Barrio was a 29-year-old Spanish bullfighter. Sadly, on July 9th, 2016, his bullfighting days came to an end when a 529-kilogram bull's horn pierced through his chest. This moment was captured in front of a live audience and also was broadcasted on live TV. Some people managed to get photos as this happened and it's horrifying. You can see the look of pain on his face as the bull's horn just plunges through him. Like I feel so bad for him and for all the people that had to witness it. It's so scary. In our 8th spot we have the Panama Hikers. Chris Kremers and Lizanne Froon were two young Dutch females that saved up to take a trip to Panama. Except while on a hike in the Panamanian jungle, the two disappeared. It wasn't until months later that their bodies were found, but it's still unclear how the two died. The last photos taken of them were in April of 2014, the day that they went on the hike. They are selfies of the girls looking very excited to be on the trip. These photos were found on their camera, which was found in a backpack along the banks of a river. The camera also contained other pictures, like of the jungle in the dead of night. Maybe they were using the camera's flash as a source of light. Another photo showed the back of Chris's head and it was bleeding. Again, it's so scary looking at these photos. Like these poor young girls had no clue what was about to happen to them and they were so excited for their trip. Coming in at number seven, we have the drowning. On October 22nd, 2003, Tina Watson and her husband, David Gabriel, went out scuba diving on their honeymoon. They just got married 11 days earlier and scuba diving was part of their honeymoon itinerary. Now in this photo, if you look right at the back, you can see a diver laying on the sea floor. That's Tina Watson. A few minutes before this photo was taken, it's believed that her husband turned off her air supply and held her underwater until she drowned. Then he swam up to the surface to alert other divers that she was in trouble. The photo was captured accidentally and you can see the divers going to help Tina. Some say he held her underwater until she drowned. Others say he saw her struggling as a new scuba diver and just kind of left her there to die on her own. Either way, he pleaded guilty to manslaughter and that was the last photo ever taken of her. In our sixth spot, we have the Dyatlov Pass incident. In February of 1959, a group of nine experienced hikers set out to traverse the snowy mountains of Siberia. However, they all ended up mysteriously dying one by one. This photo was one of the last photos taken of them. Now this case has been debated about for years and there's tons of theories as to what happened to them. Some say they were hit by an avalanche at night and died from exposure. Others say a yeti got them. In fact, there was a picture of a creature that looks like a yeti found on one of the explorers cameras. But it's a very odd case, like their tent was found ripped open from the inside, two bodies were found and they were only wearing underwear in the freezing cold, another explorer's body was missing her tongue, eyes and lips, and two of the other bodies had major chest fractures. To cause someone that much damage, it would be like equivalent to a car crash. And another hiker had a really high level of radiation on their clothes. It's just crazy and to this day we don't know what truly happened. We all have these theories, but the only ones that really know are the hikers in the photo. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the submarine murder. Back in August of 2013, freelance journalist Kim Wall got an interview with Danish inventor Peter Madsen. As part of the interview, Kim was set to take a trip on his homemade submarine. This photo shows Kim aboard the submarine just before her trip. Sadly, once inside, Peter killed her and dismembered her body. Why did he do this? Well, some say he became fascinated with murder and torture. Evidence showed that he had been watching videos of women being killed on his computer. And shortly before he beheaded Kim, he watched a video on it. So it was clear that he had a fascination with it. It's sad that Kim
him had to be his victim. In our fourth spot, we have the Facebook murder. A couple of hours after this picture was taken, Cheyenne Anton left, used the black belt she is seen wearing in that photo to strangle Brittany Gargle. The two were best friends, but apparently got into a heated argument and Cheyenne hit and strangled Brittany. Imagine taking a selfie with someone you thought you could trust just for them to go and kill you a couple hours later. It is so sick. Now, Cheyenne actually got away with this murder for two years until police finally found this photo on her Facebook and noticed that the belt that she was wearing was the same one found at the crime scene. She then pleaded guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to seven years in prison. Moving on to number three, we have Parkour Gone Wrong. Pavel Kashin was known for his dangerous stunts and abilities. In 2013, he challenged himself to do a backflip on the edge of a 16 floor building. He successfully completed the backflip, but as he landed, he lost his footing and fell over the edge. He died instantly. This photo was captured by his friend while he was performing the stunt. You can see he's in midair doing his trick. Sadly, that was the last stunt he ever performed. And at number two, we have the stalker. On February of 2017, best friends Abby Williams and Libby German headed out for a hike in Indiana. This photo is of Abby Williams, taken right before they were both murdered. What's very disturbing is that in the background of these photos, you can literally see their killer lurking there. Apparently the man was stalking them for quite some time and in the girl's photo roll, they actually got some pictures of him, probably because they felt like he was following them. So in the last photo ever taken of Abby, you can literally see her killer behind her. It makes me so sick. Worst of all, he's never been caught. There's currently a reward for anyone that can identify the man though, so hopefully they can get some justice soon. And in our number one spot, we have the gruesome scene. This photo is going to send shivers down your spine. But before I show you, let me give you a quick backstory. So this photo was taken of Travis Alexander while he was taking a shower. It was taken by his girlfriend and murderer Jody shortly before she stabbed him 27 to 29 times. She also slit his throat nearly ear to ear and shot him in the head. It was a very gruesome and sinister murder. In this photo, you can see how uncomfortable Travis looks. It's almost as if he knew she was up to something. He looks absolutely terrified. Now the camera that captured this photo was actually tossed into his washing machine as an attempt to destroy it. But it didn't work and some of the photos were still salvageable, like this one and one that she took of Travis's dead bloody body. I saw it, you don't want to see it. Starting off this countdown, we have the secret entrances. Just last year, a man claimed to have found three hidden entrances that lead to Area 51. He discovered this after using Google Earth. He compared images of the base from different time periods. In one particular area in 1998, there seems to be no roads or entrance. Satellite pictures of that same location in 2005, 2010, and 2013 show a road and a dead end with what looks like an entrance and tunnel carved into a mountain. In fact, at the dead end, there appears to be cars parked there. Seems unusual for people to just park there, because what is around for them to do? Wander the barren plain alone? No, they're parking their cars there and then entering Area 51 through this secret entrance. All right, so this photo was one of the last photos of John F. Kennedy. It was taken just before his assassination in Dallas on November 22nd, 1963. In the photo, you can see President Kennedy in his car waving to the audience. A little while later at 12.30 p.m., he was shot in the head and died instantly. This may be one of the last photos of him, but someone managed to capture his very last moments on film. Abraham Zapruder was filming Kennedy while this all went down and got every gory detail on camera. That's extremely sad. Coming in at number eight, we have Carrie Fisher. She was the first love for so many nerds out there. Every kid growing up in the 80s remembers Princess Leia in a bronze bikini being kept by the disgusting Jabba the Hutt. But Carrie Fisher will always be remembered because she's one of the most important parts of the biggest movie franchise in the world. And she's had a pretty amazing career, but eventually old age will get all of us. This was the last picture taken of the famous actress. A fan stopped her in the street and asked her for a picture and the kind soul that she is, she obliged. The next day she would be on a plane and partway through the flight she started to experience some chest pains. Fisher was experiencing a heart attack in the air. The pilot landed and she was rushed to the hospital, but she would pass away four days later. In our seventh spot we have Sharon Tate. These beautiful photos of Sharon Tate were taken a couple of days before she was brutally murdered by the Manson family. In the photo she was 
was eight and a half months pregnant with her first child. You can see her posing for photos with her baby bump showing proud. A couple days later, on August 8th, Manson ordered his cult followers to go to the home that Sharon was renting and have everyone there gruesomely murdered. Why? Well, some say it's because the home's previous owner, a music producer, Terry Melcher, pissed off Charles by not giving him a recording contract. It's just sad that Sharon had to die like that, and so young. Had they rented a different house, things may have been different. Coming in at number six, we have Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze was the man of his day. Roadhouse, Dirty Dancing, Point Break, Red Dawn, Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko! Sorry. All those movies. Great movie. Great movie. He was not only one of the biggest stars of his generation, but he was also a heartthrob and known for being in incredible shape. That's why the news of his sickness shook the world so hard. Patrick Swayze would be diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer and step away from film because of how ill he was. This was the last photo ever taken of him. It's wild to see this guy like this since he used to be known for having a rock solid body, but he's withered away. It really makes you see how devastating cancer can be to a person. On the brighter side, his last moments were spent with his family, which is how I'm sure he wanted to spend them. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Elvis Presley. In this photo taken on August 16th, 1977, we see Elvis Presley driving home after just visiting his dentist. Little did we know that later that day, he would be found dead in his bathroom by his girlfriend. Look at him driving home unaware that he was going to die shortly after. Now apparently his death is due to heart failure from ongoing drug abuse, but it's also thought that maybe the codeine pills that the dentist gave him had something to do with his death. He was known to have a mild allergy to codeine. It's thought that maybe that drug just pushed him over the edge that day. Had he not been to the dentist, maybe things would have been different. Coming in at number four, we have Prince. We are back again with one of the best rock stars of all time. Prince will go down as one of the best musicians on earth. He could literally play everything. Dave Grohl was once asked if he thought that Prince was a better musician than him, and he said, dude, Prince is a better drummer than me. That's how good Prince is. Not to mention his persona. He was a character that was so uniquely him, we probably won't see someone like Prince around for a very long time. I think a few of you out there remember the Dave Chappelle sketch about Prince. This bores me. Is anyone up for a game of basketball? Apparently this guy could ball seriously as well, which is nuts. But Prince's intense lifestyle eventually caught up with him. He started having serious health problems. People say that from performing nearly every night and wearing high heels constantly, he developed terrible hip and back problems. This led to him eventually needing serious painkillers to function, and this sadly led to an overdose. This was the last picture of him alive. In our third spot, we have Princess Diana. This photo was taken on August 31st, 1997, just before Diana died in a car crash. In the photo taken by paparazzi, we can see Diana in the car with her rumored boyfriend. Moments after the picture was taken, the intoxicated driver lost control of the car and crashed into a pillar. The driver and her boyfriend died instantly. Diana suffered from a concussion, a broken arm, cut thigh, and massive chest injuries. She died later in the hospital as a result. It's so sad. No one ever thought that this was going to happen to them. Especially Diana, who got into the car thinking she was going to arrive at her destination safely. Coming in at number two, we have Steve Irwin, otherwise known as the Crocodile Hunter. Steve was known for wrestling crocodiles and getting up close and personal with other dangerous creatures. The last photos taken of him were by tourists on September 4th, 2006. They saw him filming a documentary and stopped to take photos. One of the photos caught Steve waving to his fans. A little while later, Steve would die after a stingray's barb pierced through his chest. What's even more scary is that his last words were, I'm dying. That is so heartbreaking to think about. Coming in at the number one spot, we have Martin Luther King, one of the greatest men who ever lived. Martin Luther King fought tirelessly to push America towards a world of equality, to make the USA a place where people from every race could work side by side and didn't need to worry about the color of their skin. It's because of him and other people like him that we have the Civil Rights Act. On April 3rd, 1968, Dr. King was set to appear in Tennessee to talk about how black factory workers were being paid substantially less than their white co-workers for the same job. This was the last picture of him taken. Not long after this picture was taken, Martin Luther King was assassinated. He would be shot on the balcony, all because he thought that people of different races should be treated equally. We talk about people like this now so we don't forget what they've done for us. In our number 10 spot today, we have John Lennon. 
Of course, we all know John Lennon as one part of the Beatles who went on after they disbanded to have a very successful solo career. Lennon was not only a musician, but also a peace activist who was strongly anti-war. He was not afraid to display his activism and held a two-week anti-war demonstration. There was a period of three years where the Nixon administration was trying to have him deported for his criticism against the Vietnam War. On December 8th, 1980, Lennon was leaving the Dakota apartment complex when he was stopped by a man named Mark David Chapman. Lennon signed an autograph for Mark, which is what is happening in this photo, and then Lennon went on his way. Little did he know, Mark was going to shoot him later that night. Once Lennon returned to the apartment complex, Mark was there waiting for him to commit his crime. Mark has said he did it mostly for the attention, which is so horrifying, but Mark is also a very religious man who explained that Lennon once saying that the Beatles were more famous than Jesus is what really pushed him to commit this crime. It is very crazy that this photo was captured when Lennon was being kind to who he thought was a fan, and no one could have predicted what would happen just a few hours later. In our ninth spot, we have the alien craft. What I'm about to show you is a leaked video and some photos from Area 51 of an alien spacecraft test. The video features a flying object hovering in the sky and moving in ways that other crafts definitely don't do. This was recorded on May 15, 2017 and then was leaked years later. If this isn't actually a UFO, then what could it be? That's what's baffling people. The way it just moves up and down and side to side that quickly is very strange, especially because of its size. What do you think though? Is this proof that Area 51 has gotten their hands on an alien spacecraft? Moving on to number 8, we have the transportation of a UFO. When this next photo was leaked online, it was met with a number of conspiracy theories. So this is the image of the CIA transporting a large part for one of their top secret projects. In fact, when this was getting transported, the CIA sealed off the entire highway. And I'm sure you can see why this was met with a number of conspiracy theories. Like look at the shape of the thing that they're transporting. That is definitely a UFO or part of a UFO spaceship. Now this is where it gets even more interesting. Somehow a group of bikers made it onto the road. When they were stopped by some soldiers, they asked what they were transporting, and the soldier said they found a UFO up in the mountains. Now apparently he said this jokingly, but who knows? In our 7th spot we have the Tic Tac UFO. Last year another UFO was spotted near Area 51. This one was given the name the Tic Tac UFO because of its Tic Tac shape and white or bright appearance. So this spacecraft was caught on footage by a person driving along near Area 51. He was driving along the extraterrestrial highway, that's the name given to the highway in Nevada, as a number of UFOs have been seen by drivers while on this route. At first, the driver thought that what he was seeing was just a cloud. When he got closer to it, he realized that it was definitely a craft of some kind. Later on, alien hunter Scott Waring confirmed that the UFO was in fact alien in origin. Also, the area in which he was driving through had a number of wind farms in the area. Turns out that in the past a lot of UFOs have been spotted around wind farms and one UFO even crashed into a windmill many years back. Some say this is because aliens are fascinated with human technology. In our 6th spot we have Steven Barron. In 2016, UFO hunter Steve Barron captured video and photographic evidence of another alien spacecraft close to Area 51. These were taken near his home in Las Vegas, Nevada, an hour drive from Area 51. Using a night vision camera, Steve head out to Red Rock Canyon to try and capture a UFO. The first couple of hours, there was nothing. Then he saw mysterious weird flashing lights appear over a mountain. He said this in regards to the UFO and its lights, and I quote, First one, then two, then more and more. They put on a spectacular show. I am glad I was patient because the show they put on kept getting better and better. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the CIA spy plane. In 2011, Los Angeles Times journalist Annie Jacobson published a book called Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In the book, she included a number of never before seen photos of the base. The first one I want to show you is of a CIA spy plane. 
This photo shows an A12 ox cart hidden behind a barrier at Area 51. This was a top secret plane that was created to reach high speeds and altitudes. During the first three years of testing this plane, everything was kept top secret. In fact, the pilots weren't even allowed to tell their wives what they were working on. On May 24th, 1963, during a test flight, the plane crashed. The pilot, Ken Collins, was fine but had to eject himself out of the plane. But afterwards, the CIA actually injected him with sodium pentothal, aka truth serum, to then interrogate him after the crash. That's crazy. In our fourth spot, we have the rare photo. So this photo was also featured in Annie Jacobson's book, Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In fact, this is a very rare photo that has never been published before. It was published for the first time in Annie's book, and that's it. This photo is an aerial view of Area 51, taken in 1964. I don't know why it was kept a secret for so long or how Annie got her hands on it, but she did and decided to share it with the world. Moving on at number 3, we have the early U-2 spy planes. In the early 1950s, at the peak of the Cold War, the CIA began to develop planes that they wanted to reach an altitude of 70,000 feet to avoid detection against Soviet radar. This gave birth to the U-2 spy planes that you see here in this picture. This photo was taken in Area 51 in 1956, and pictures a worker standing on the plane's wing. Sadly, at least three pilots lost their lives during test flights, including two at Area 51 and one at an Air Force base in Germany. Coming in at number two, we have Boyd Bushman. Shortly before his death, former Area 51 engineer Boyd Bushman revealed that he encountered aliens while working at Area 51. In a video, Bushman shows a number of mysterious photos to the camera, including one of an alien and a number of photos of the alien's appendages. We have a total of at least 18 that exist and operate with our facility. Now, many people believe that this man is telling the truth. Why? Because he had nothing to gain or lose by sharing his story. Plus, an interrogator with the police studied Boyd's movements and speech pattern during this interview, and he said that it appears as if he's telling the truth. In the interview, he said that Area 51 has at least 18 of these aliens in their facility. He also claims that there are two groups of aliens. One group are called the Wranglers, the others are called the Rustlers. The aliens that are considered Wranglers are friendly and have a better relationship with humans. Rustlers, however, have been known to steal cattle. This is all insane. And in our number one spot today, we have Boyd Bushman and the UFO. During his interview, Boyd Bushman also revealed photos of real UFO spacecrafts that he saw while working at Area 51. Up close and personal, this is a UFO which is ready to take off. So that's a close up photo of a UFO spacecraft taking off. Then he also showed a different photo of a UFO spacecraft with its lights turned off. Kicking off the list at number 10, William Thomas Dead. Born in 1849, William Thomas Dead was the son of Congregationalist minister, and at the age of 22, he was appointed as editor of the Northern Echo, a regional newspaper in Darlington. This British medium, Richard Borsonal, featured a photo of W.T. Stead and a spirit. Or a demon. One of the two, both pretty terrifying. While William was investigating a spiritual case, he took this photo with what's supposed to be the spirit of Pete Botha. Now, the reason many believe that maybe the spirit is evil is that Stead later on died in the Titanic. He boarded the ship to take part in a peace congress at Carnegie Hall, and survivors mentioned William Thomas Stead a few times. Apparently, at dinner, he was chatting his way throughout the entire 11 course meal, recounting exciting, spooky times in his life, even mentioning a cursed mummy that he encountered at the British Museum once. That's a little odd for table talk. He even gave his life jacket to another passenger that night too. Stead would often claim that he would one day pass due to hanging or to drowning. And right before he was to be awarded with the Nobel Peace Prize, he passed away due to the latter. Was he cursed? I believe so, to be honest with you. Coming in at number 9, we have even closer, if you can imagine it. This is one of the closest ever images taken of Area 51. It was taken from a light aircraft and is in the Nevada Aerospace Hall of Fame right now. Here we can see a much closer overview of the whole compound, something that would have been classified just a few years ago. Coming in to number 8, we have the airstrip. In 2013, some documents about Area 51 were declassified, although many criticised the response to the Freedom of Information 
information request to having been underwhelming, featuring heavily redacted information. Nonetheless, in 2016, the US did permit Google Earth to photograph the area, which had previously been a no-fly zone. Now you too can view the facility from a bird's eye view. You can check it out and see what's going on, although from very high in the sky. From browsing Google, around 12 miles north of Area 51, there seems to be an unexplained airstrip coming in at around one mile long. There is also a visible cluster of buildings at the end of the strip, which is kind of baffling. We've got no idea what's being tested here. According to intel from the website Life Science, though, it is thought that the space could be used to test reconnaissance drones. Coming into number seven, we have the Paradise Trailers. Area 51 used to be colloquially known as Paradise Ranch in order to make it sound more appealing to families of workers. I suppose it's a lot to ask a person to relocate to the middle of the desert, so why not rebrand the place Paradise and make it sound more appealing? An image has been released of the Paradise era showing a number of trailers at the facility. Is this where families lived, or was it home to aliens? It's kind of cool seeing how things used to be in its heyday, assuming its heyday is over. We just don't know. Alright, coming into number six, this is the big one. It is the alien autopsy. The alien autopsy was reportedly shot in Area 51 and depicts the aliens that were transported to the facility from Roswell after the 1947 crash. The crash was said to have been of a flying disc UFO and was said to have contained wounded aliens. The video was released in 1995 by Ray Santilli, who said that the footage had been supplied to him by a former military camera technician who wanted to remain anonymous, obviously. Let's have a little look at the footage, shall we? Um, I mean, that is a dead alien right there, right? But like, is it? The footage absolutely blew up in 1995, but people were quick to call it a fraud. In the end, Santilli claimed that yeah, only part of the footage was real. He said that only a few frames from the original footage were there, but they were there. He also said the rest had been replicated and was a reconstruction of footage he had had, but was damaged. Sounds likely. Coming into number five, we have the Roswell Rescue. Footage claiming to be from the Roswell fallout surfaced on the internet in 2015 and alleges to show agents holding alien corpses and taking them on a stretcher. Have a little look. I don't know, it kind of looks a bit sketchy, right? Can we get another look? Hmm, I guess it was 1947, so we can't expect too much film wise, but I'm not sure this is quite the smoking gun we were looking for. The video has had around 160,000 views on YouTube, but the like to dislike ratio suggests that some people may not be too convinced as to its authenticity. One of my favourite comments on the video comes from Mr. Saturday Night Special, who wrote, This has to be real. Everyone knows when you travel across the universe, you don't wear clothes. Just ask Chewbacca. He'll tell you. You're right. You know what? Are we the only species that like to cover our modesty? All of these aliens crashing, like, where are their little alien suits? Come on. Coming into number four, we have Kodak Confirms. Allegedly, anyway. In 2014, a UFO expert, sorry, a UFO expert, Tom Carey, was sent images from a woman who wished to remain anonymous, but claimed that she had worked with the Secret Service. The image was reportedly taken at Area 51 following the Roswell crash and seems to show a bug like alien. Let's have a look, shall we? The image seems to support what a number of people who used to work at the Area 51 have said about the facility, including Robert Lazar and staff members from the esteemed Lockheed Martin firm. But like seriously, come on, is this an actual image of an alien? Can we trust anything in the age of Photoshop? It seems that Kerry thought of that and sent the image to Kodak themselves, who were able to confirm that it was taken in 1947. Again. Allegedly. If they sent him a letter saying this, then I haven't seen it. When speaking to the press, Carey said, What's interesting is, is that the film is dated in 1947. We took it to the official historian of Kodak up in Rochester, New York, and he did his due diligence on it. And he said that yes, this film strip and the slides are from 1947. It's 1947 stock. From the emulsion on the image, it's not something like it's been photoshopped today. If Kodak did call this authentic, 
haven't seen any certification. Coming into number three, we have another alien, of course. In 2012, Chicago videographer Adam Dew received a call from his former business partner Joseph Beeson. He claimed that he had something to show him, and boy did he. Beeson had a private disposal unit sister, and she'd come across a box of photographs that seemed to have been taken by someone close to President Eisenhower. He was in a number of the images himself, as were Bing Crosby and Clark Gable. Two of the images she had been tasked with disposing were absolutely outrageous. Get a load of them for yourself. That's right, it is a small withered brown body of an alien in a glass case. And this was all among the images of the president, which is pretty crazy. The images were found in the garage of a woman named Hilda Blair Ray near Sedona in Arizona. Now, the pair did believe that the images were linked to Area 51 and Roswell. They sent the images to none other than Tom Carey. Tom once again believed that the images looked just like like what witnesses had described in the Roswell crash. Let's have another look, shall we? It really does kind of look like an alien wrapped in some kind of cloth, but unfortunately for Tom Carey, the image turned out to be of a mummified corpse of an Aztec child and not a secret leak from Area 51. Our final two, I have to say, are pretty convincing. It's not alien stuff, but I do think that these are secret pictures from Area 51. Coming into number two, we have the strange plane. Here's an image of something that looks like a strange aircraft or something reportedly taken at Area 51 anyway. It is known that the United States Air Force is present at the facility, and several spy planes have been developed there, including the U-2 spy plane and the SR-71 Blackbird, and possibly others like the Rumored Aurora Project. So. What is the plane in this image? I don't actually know. Could it be one of the alien aircraft that allegedly whistleblower Bob Lazar talked about reverse engineering? Or is it another spy plane? Finally, coming into number one, we have an image of a secret plane crash covered up. It seems an A-12 spy plane, possibly the one pictured above, crashed in 1963 after taking off from the secret airbase. The crash happened in Wendover, Utah, when Area 51 pilot Ken Colmer was testing the plane's subsonic engines at low altitude. The pilot ejected from the plane crash, after which he was subjected to hypnosis and doping to make sure that he relayed the incident and how it occurred honestly and truthfully. Here are the previously classified images of the crash. Now, As you can see, vehicles raced to recover the wreckage, which was extremely sensitive to the United States Air Force. It seems a government sanitation team was deployed to remove all traces of the spy plane. To me, that sounds very, very strange. So too does it that they kept the images of this plane crash a secret for such a long time. Do you think it really was a spy plane that crashed, or given the response, something much more sensitive? Coming into number 10, we have Up Close and Personal with Area 51. In September 2017, YouTube channel UFO Seekers did just that. They sought UFOs. What did they find? Well, you will see. Tim Lee and Tracy Doyle hiked up Tickaboo Peak, a 1.4 mile high mountain 25 miles opposite the military base. The duo used telescopic lenses to get the clearest possible photos of the secret base ever taken from outside by just a civilian. Although you can't see little aliens running around or anything, there are plenty of vehicles to be seen, plus an expansive building and water towers. It isn't too scary, but the video is super interesting how they got there and everything, and actually it's quite tense. Had they been caught by authorities taking long lens images, then they really could have been in trouble. The video is 18 minutes long, but here is a clip of the YouTubers finding the base. The video has had over 2.4 million views. Perhaps the Kyles are watching it to swat up for their attack planned on the 20th of September. Kyles. In our number nine spot today, we have the Stanford Prison Experiment. This photo comes from 1971 during the Stanford Prison Experiment. For those of you who aren't familiar with this experiment, it started on August 14th, 1971, and was led by university psychology professor Philip Zimbardo. The experiment took student volunteers and divided them into two groups, one group of prisoners and one group of guards, and they placed all of the volunteers into a fake prison that was created for the experiment. The experiment aimed to see if and how quickly humans would turn evil under the right conditions with the right amount of power. Basically, it was just to try and answer the question of if humans are inherently good or inherently evil. I think everyone was shocked with the results. After only six days, the experiment needed to be concluded because the guards began to 
absolutely tormenting the prisoners. It really showed the kinds of things humans can be capable of even after such a short time. This photo is definitely reminiscent of that experiment and serves as our reminder. In our number eight spot today, we have the Pioneer's Defense. This photo is known as the Pioneer's Defense and man, does it ever look creepy. This photo comes from 1937 and was taken by a Russian photographer named Viktor Bula. This photo takes place in the Leningrad area, which is now known as St. Petersburg, which is the second largest city in Russia. The people in this photo were a part of a group that was the 1930s Russian equivalent of our Boy Scouts, which was called the Young Pioneers. The masks on their faces leave a very eerie feeling, and for a fair reason. These people were doing a military preparation drill, which is the reason for the gas masks. This photo was taken during a time when the country was under the dictatorship of Joseph Stalin, and the residents were constantly unsure of what was going to happen. The country was already seeing death, and people were already frightened just a few years before the start of World War II. In our number seven spot today, we have the Stanley Hotel. This is a photo of the Stanley Hotel, which is the hotel that inspired the famous Stephen King novel, The Shining. This hotel was under construction in the early 1900s and saw a fateful day in 1911. There was an unexplained explosion that happened in room 217. In the explosion, a chambermaid was seriously injured, but she ended up surviving and actually returning to work. A few years later, she passed away, and ever since her passing, there have been tons of guests who swear they saw her ghost. Guests have said that they have seen her around the halls of the hotel, but the place that gets the most paranormal activity is of course room 217. This is the room where Stephen and his wife stayed for one terrifying night in 1974. Apparently they were actually the only guests in the hotel for this night, which at any other hotel might be cool, but I feel like this is not what you want from a haunted hotel. In our number six spot today, we have the Rothschild Surrealist Ball. The Rothschild family is one of the wealthiest and most powerful families there has ever been. For years and years, there have been many rumors swirling about just how powerful and influential they really are, and there are some pretty crazy theories out there. In 1972, the family held a surrealist ball, which is where this photo is from. These photos could be potentially very innocent, but there is just something about these elaborate masks, coupled with the theories about what this family is really up to, that just makes Make it feel very eerie. This party is one of the most legendary there has ever been, and whether or not they really are involved in shady dealings, that still is impressive. In our number five spot today, we have the Salem UFO. On the morning of July 16th, 1952, this photo was captured by Shell Alpert and has stumped people ever since. This photo shows four unidentified objects hovering in the air above Salem, Massachusetts, and was taken at the Salem Coast Guard Air Station. The object Objects seem to be above the Winter Island and Cat Cove areas, but there really isn't much more that is known about this strange incident. There were a few theories regarding this photo. One is a camera glitch. Others think it may have just been light reflecting off of the window that the photo was taken through. But of course, there are people who point to similar incidents that happened in the 1950s, and of course believe it is proof of extraterrestrial beings. It is very likely we may never know exactly, but the air of mystery it leaves is definitely kind of cool. In our number four spot today, we have the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens is a stratovolcano located in Skamania County, Washington. Washington. The volcano is best known for its huge and disastrous eruption on May 18, 1980. This photograph comes from photographer Robert Landsberg, who was of course in the area at the time of this eruption. Before the eruption, he had visited the area in order to photograph and document all of the changes that were happening. On May 18th, he was within a few miles of the volcano when it erupted. Since he unfortunately was located so close to the explosion, he knew that he would be unable to escape this disaster. So instead of focusing on the impossible, he focused on taking as many pictures as possible. Robert was obviously incredibly brave and dedicated, but also very smart. After snapping as many photos as he could, including this one, he then secured his camera in his backpack and covered his backpack with his body. He knew he was unlikely to survive, but wanted to make sure that these photos did. His body was found 17 days later with his backpack still underneath him. His film was of course the developed and has provided geologists
geologists with some really valuable insights with his close documentation of the eruption. In our number three spot today, we have this burst of joy. You might be looking at this photo wondering how this extremely joyous photo could hold any dark secrets. Well, this photo won a Pulitzer Prize, and for a good reason. This photo was captured by Slava Vedder on March 17, 1973, at the Travis Air Force Base in California. The photo shows United States Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Robert L. Sturm and his family. This was taken as he was being reunited with his family after five years of being held as a prisoner of war in North Vietnam. On October 27, 1967, he was leading a flight of F-105 when he was shot down over Hanoi and held captive until March 14th, 1973. I can't imagine what this must have been like for his family because there was a chance that he could have not come home at all. The girl with her arms wide is his 15 year old daughter, but the look on all of their faces truly captures the pure joy that they are all feeling. In our number two spot today, we have the frozen man of Mount Everest. This photo comes from 1996 and it shows Beck Weathers getting treated after the Mount Everest disaster. The Mount Everest disaster took place on May 10th and 11th in 1996, where there was a blizzard on the mountain that ended up stranding and taking the lives of eight people who were aiming to descend the mountain. Beck was a part of the team who was climbing the mountain on this fateful day and he ended up suffering from snow blindness during the climb. He actually fell into a hypothermic coma because it was so cold and he suffered severe frostbite on his face, hands, and feet. Pretty miraculously, he not only survived, but ended up walking back down to camp in order to get help, where he was then taken by helicopter to receive treatment. He ended up needing his hands, part of his feet, and even his nose amputated, but he survived this whole ordeal, and that is the most important thing. In our number one spot today, we have the Dyatlov Pass incident. If you have never heard of the Dyatlov, of pass incident, you better buckle in because it is so terrifying. This photo was taken in February of 1959 as nine young Soviet hikers set out to trek through the Ural Mountains. They had set up camp and sometime during the night, something happened that made them cut their way out of the tent and all flee the site. Leaving in such a rush, they were of course underdressed for the bitterly cold weather and six of them ended up passing away from hypothermia, which is extremely tragic. Tragic. The other three, however, is where this story takes a frightening turn. Like I mentioned before, no one knows why they fled the tent in the first place, and the last three hikers were found passed away with severe signs of physical trauma that no one could agree on what had caused it. In 2019, the investigation was reopened, and just last year there was a conclusion that a kind of avalanche called a slab avalanche was the cause of these injuries. Regardless of what happened, this whole incident was of course very tragic, but the mystery behind it definitely takes it to a spooky place. Mm -hmm. 